Um, now, let's save time by directly going to Dr. Aklilu's presentation. He's available, right? He's not in Ethiopia currently, but we didn't want to miss his perspective from wherever he has a lot to explain. From wherever he is, he has to... Um, He's in. Yes? Yeah. I can't see him here. Oh, he's here. Okay. Well, Doc, Tades. Hello. Ndamene. Ndamene. Wonderful. I'm just. Yusamal, can you hear us? Yes, I can. I'm hearing Clearly. You. Wonderful. Yeah. We also the hear you. Sorry? The screen will share and share again. Okay. Can you allow him to share the screen, please? So the floor is yours, sir. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Gamachu. It's really good to have you. Good afternoon, everyone. Guests, participants, and organizers. Really, it is a pleasure to be in front of you and sharing my perspective on the works of opening of the European financial system especially the banking for foreign participation. Hoping you may have heard similar notion from the preceding activities. However, for me to say something on the of opening of the banking sector for the foreign participation in the East African Financial Summit is worldwide. In this regard, I'm highly grateful to all organizers of the Financial Summit. I am a clear bit. CEO of Gagan Bank. I am here to say something about the financial liberalization and its dimension, the colorful genesis of Ethiopian banking, challenge, and opportunity of opening of Ethiopian finance sector for foreign participations. As we know all, liberalization is an engagement that helps markets to determine who gets what and at what price in relation to a resource called credit. Liberalization has six dimensions. The first dimension is elimination of credit controls. This notion has all three components, the credit term, an arrangement between the borrower and the bank, the credit standards, the guidelines, for Zola approval and the collection policies, whether extension, follow up of collection, or a business strategy to recover the receivables. As you know very well, although credit control helps in improving cash flow, reduce bad debt, and maintain financial stability, but still may reduce sales, which is unimportant to the market. So, Direct credit to sectors, excess high resources requirement by some sectors, ceiling on credit to other sectors may not be in the picture. Why? Because it is this market that determines who gets what and at what price. The second option is an elimination of control on interest rates. There might be a leverage, each bank can decide its own interest based on their financial condition or portfolio. Another notion is the free entry of the banking sector. Anyone who has put up the required capital can join. No discrimination, whether local or international. But another very important notion is a bank autonomy. That means central bank autonomy. Central bank can carry its own function without the influence of executive and the regulatory branch of the government, without being subject to direct control for regulative and executive. Should be autonomous, we're going to see. The, the last, the, the first one is the private ownership in the banking sector. You know, Ethiopian economy has been so far partially raised. Why not for this reason, it, it's not open for foreign participations. The sixth one is the liberalization of international capital flow. Another aspect that still makes the Ethiopian economy not fully liberalized 
in the assets of capital flow. So far, the current account liberalized, but the capital account is not. After the opening of banking sector, it might be in the, it might not be in the in the picture to see uh, to see not capital flow. This liberalization has few aspects. One for domestic and the other for foreign. For the domestic, the issue might be interest rate deregulation. The, lever the leverage to decide by its own. Private bank competition among between the local and the foreign. Relaxed credit controls. Easing up of restrictions, especially reserve requirements on the balance sheet portfolio. But for the international banking, the issue might be, it could be Greenfield, starting afresh, or merger and acquisition, most likely. It is a two-way street. A bank can expand into our market through Greenfield that banks can build from the scratch, or they can join by acquisition or mergers for a better experiences. It has also a cross-border lending advantage. It has a cross-border financing where a borrower gets funds from outside its territory that helps business compete global. In nutshell, foreign banks can enter into an economy by acquiring an existing domestic bank or by setting up de novo operation as a, that's an afresh operation. Having said all, when you try to see the colorful genesis of Ethiopia banking system, to and from different polar opposites, it had a chance to enjoy foreign and local bank operating in Ethiopia in one era. In different years, we have seen Abyssinia Bank, Banco d'Italia, Bank, bank of Napoli, Bank Barclay Bank, State Bank of Ethiopia, Addis Bank, Ethiopia Bank system. This is the first color. Another new color in the shift was a complete nationalization of banks among all, making all banks public. Still, today, there is a new chapter with a new shade of color is the prevailing banking system, where both public and private banks simultaneously operate in European skies. We can see here it is partially liberalized and not fully open for foreign participation. Now, we are going to see a new shift with new color, that is the opening of Ethiopian finance sector for foreign participation. Therefore, Ethiopian bank is to be open to all with a, with a list of menu items that is subsidiary, 100% foreign owned, equity share, the extent of 40% goes to the foreign, uh, that is 34 banks, maybe five uh, or 10 for non-banks, the maximum is 5%. The third priority is opening of branches that can give credit or collect deposits. And the last one is opening of an inventory for visa that's already exists in Ethiopia. The question is, what does the future hold the central bank of revision of central bank of Ethiopia, revision of proclamation and directives? What are the financial codes that accumulate issues related to foreign banking entry? It will continue to be puzzling until we see the new revision. Of course, I am still curious to see what will be the nature of corporate governance of the coming banks. What will be the leverage of all sectors? And how? What will look like the General Assembly meeting and its minutes? What's going to be included or excluded the off-site and on-site examinations? What will be the notion of striking a balance between competition and collaboration among sectors? And many more questions that require to be answered in the new revisions. In light of the above, of course, there are still opportunities and challenges for Ethiopian banks. <clears throat> the opportunity for domestic banks, for, for me, like Wagabin Bank, is competition may help 
for better endeavor, such as to streamline our corporate governance, to boost our risk management, to engage in customer new customer experiences. It will have also an opportunity in advancement of technology and its, its spillover effects. Definitely, we expect relaxation of regulatory policies. There shall be access to international markets. New ways of doing things will be in the pictures. Liquidity advantage through interbank loan. And there might be the things of long-term relationships. But this opportunity may not come alone. There might be also a challenge for domestic banks. Number one is the cherry picking. Big depositors, big borrowers, and any jobs may shift to well-experienced banks. However, still, here I can see some opportunity too. When you look into Ethiopian portfolio, especially the loan portfolio, the greater part is goes to a few borrowers. If these borrowers by chance goes to the new foreign banking, there might be a chance to allocate those funds to SME down to ladder to the grassroots levels and equity may be raised. But still cherry picking also a disadvantage. And also another challenge is intense competition and among between local and between foreign stocks. As a result, there might be high investment triggered by competition that reduce our revenue and challenge our profits. Disadvantage on risk management capability. Their leverage is high, ours is less. Change of ownership due to merger and acquisitions. As a result, we may lose founders level. Once we see, look into opportunity and challenge, definitely there might be a way forward. One is we have to have the capability to embrace opportunity and cope up with the challenges. We should have to have at least identified the pro and cons of mode of entry of bankers so as to ease challenge and embrace opportunity. There must be a big appetite to incorporate largely SMEs. We should follow fashionably, improve our service quality. There must be there must be a challenge to induce partnership with local banks in terms of technology, branch network, and knowledge database sharing. There must be a strategic investment in lines of knowledge and skill, as well as technology. And we should have to sort at least or look into merger to enhance competition or easy capital shortage and or branch network deficiencies. At least I would say this one. With this, I want to conclude sharing my points. I remain highly indebted to you for your precious time. I thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Aklilu. We were wondering what CEOs do think, and we wanted to hear, and we heard you out loud. <laughs>